Hey guys, it's me Jessica May May and this video I don't even know where to begin. Hey guys, it's me Jessica May May and I recently had a miscarriage and I'm angry about it. I'm angry with doctors that didn't prepare me for it and I don't know if you saw my last video, but this is an extension of my last video and so here it is. If you didn't see my last video, here's a little bit of a backstory. Um, we found out we were pregnant, we were excited, we found out at nine, at our ten and a half week, our very first ultrasound, we found out that the baby didn't have a heartbeat. Long story short, the baby decided to stay inside my body for three weeks and um, then it decided to come out on its own at home. I was scheduled for a DNC, but it was 4th of July weekend and then the baby decided to come out on 4th of July and I wasn't prepared at all. My doctor told me, if you pass the baby naturally, let me know and we will cancel your DNC. And I didn't know it was gonna be how it was. Honestly guys, doctors do not tell you enough about miscarriage. I feel like they just send you home, they don't mention pain, they don't mention the amount of blood, there are so many things that could help prepare you with, so I'm here to tell you about them. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm in a much better mood than I was in my last video. If you do want to see my last video, which talks more about, you know, the details about our miscarriage and the feelings, um, you can see the link in the description. But this video I'm about to go, it's going to go into detail about the miscarriage. It's going to cover a lot of things, so if you don't want to hear about blood, you don't want to hear about grossness and what really happens when you have a miscarriage, you should change the channel. I posted a picture on Facebook talking about how little prepared I was for my miscarriage and the response I got from women was just like overwhelming with I wish the doctors had told me. I wish I had more warning. I wish I had prepared more. And so I'm just trying to make this video so maybe you won't suffer the same things that I did. Maybe I can make this a little bit more pleasant because honestly, it's gonna be a sad experience. You're gonna have a lot of emotion and you don't wanna be, you wanna be as comfortable as you can. So that's what I'm here for and that's what we're gonna do today. But before I get into the items that helped me with the miscarriage that I really needed, I'm just going to talk to you about the miscarriage. Like, this is where I'm just going to get gross, so if you don't want to see it, you can change the channel. You don't have to watch. So the morning of July 3rd is when it started. I had light pink blood in the morning when I wiped, and then nothing else happened throughout the night. But I wore a pad just in case. Then around like 10 or 11 p.m., I started getting cramps. And the first just felt like a little flutter actually, like a little, like a tiny little flutter in the middle of my stomach. And I was like, oh, I don't know what this is. Then it started to become cramping. And then it started to become back pain and cramping at the same time. It started off just like a little bit like as you would say a period, but then it just got worse and worse and worse. And then um, all of a sudden I was just laying there on the couch and it was a gush, a serious gush of blood came out and it went through the pad that I was wearing, my underwear, my pants, all onto the couch. So let me just stop and say this. Doctors say it's going to be like a heavy period. That is so, that is so wrong. Like I've talked to so many women, it's nothing like a heavy period. This is like your gushing blood. I just feel like I wanted to know, I wish I had been informed. Side note, my friend also had a miscarriage literally three hours before I did and she went through the same thing. We both did not expect as much blood as there was and we didn't know what to do. She ended up at the ER. I did not go to the ER. I'll explain this later. But the main point of this video is I want to tell you what doctors are not telling you because I don't know why they don't. They don't tell you what really is going to happen. So back to me laying on the couch gushing out blood. I honestly had thought it was going to be like a period and then eventually maybe I would bleed a little bit more but I would change my pads and you know I would go on throughout the night. But no, it was not like a normal period. It came out a lot stronger. I felt really awful. It hurt. So after bleeding all over the couch and soaking it, I ran to the bathroom. I spent time in there trying to past everything like things were coming out it looks like clots like 
egg sized. My friend mentioned hers were golf ball, like, I mean, baseball sized. I mean, mine were mostly like about the size of an egg, but it was clots and clots and clots and clots. And I mean a lot, like to fill a whole toilet bowl right away. I thought my like little regular everyday pads were gonna work. No, not at all. I just kept having to run to the toilet. I had to change my pad much more than recommended. I changed it a lot because I was bleeding so much. I got super sick, guys, and it's really a lot of information, so if you don't wanna hear gross things, then don't listen to this, but I got so sick throughout the night. It just got worse and worse and worse, and the pain was really bad, and I was running to the toilet, and I was trying to like find the baby. I wanted the baby. We wanted to bury the baby. So I was trying to find the baby. Like I looked in the toilet. I tried to catch what I could. Like my hands were full of this blood and it was pretty traumatic. Look for the sack. I'm going to look for the tissue. But it didn't happen that way because I ended up getting really sick. So I ended up sitting on the toilet while passing huge amount of clots while having diarrhea while vomiting all at the same time. So this is like seriously what happened. I was, you feel, I mean, I don't even know what to do. Like how am I supposed to find this baby mixed in with diarrhea while I'm throwing up into the sink because my toilet's right near the sink and I couldn't keep anything down. Like I was trying to like drink water, nothing. Like I would just end up throwing it up. It was, my body was just like rejecting everything. That's something that doctors didn't tell me. I didn't know I would get like physically sick. I didn't know I was gonna have so much pain and I was like, why wasn't I prescribed any pain meds? Doctors didn't mention pain meds. No one said anything about what to take. Me and my friend were thinking like, why don't doctors, like she suggested, why don't doctors give you a miscarriage package which has items you might need in it? And I'm like, you know what, that would be helpful. You know, cause there's so much you don't think about and you don't know how to prepare. And you're just thinking about losing your baby and you're not necessarily thinking in advance all these things you're gonna need. I would have been happy with having a list even. Like, here's a list of items you might need during a miscarriage, go ahead and buy them just in case you have a miscarriage at home. I just felt clueless, my friend felt clueless. So many women I'm talking to online feel clueless. So I just want you guys to be prepared and not go through what I went through, which was just feeling really bad. So basically my miscarriage started at 11 p.m. Then on July 4th, when it hit midnight of July 4th, like everything started happening. That's when I was vomiting, having diarrhea, like every time I went to the bathroom, it was just very bad, passing clots after clots. It went on all the way until six in the morning. And like every hour I was getting up and I had nothing in my system. I hadn't had food. I wasn't able to keep anything down. So I couldn't even walk. There was points where I was stumbling trying to get from the living room because I decided I would sleep on the floor because I didn't have the proper things to keep my bedding from getting full of blood and I didn't want to ruin anything. So I just decided I'm gonna sleep on the floor next to the dog and it was awful. We have a hardwood floor. I, it hurt my back, it hurt my hips. I could barely get any sleep at all anyways but I was running from the living room floor to the bathroom and I couldn't even stand anymore. I couldn't walk anymore. I was like falling over, grabbing onto the couch, whatever I could to get from the living room to the bathroom. And my husband was like, you gotta go to the ER, you gotta go to the ER. And I said, no, I do not wanna go to the ER. Um, I just felt like my friend had been at the ER and we were texting each other and she was basically just waiting in the waiting room to be seen by a doctor and they just had her bleed there. So she was in the waiting room without her husband because no one could come in with her and just bleeding there and passing this baby in the waiting room of a doc of an emergency room. And I just couldn't believe that and I didn't want that to happen to me and even though I really do believe fully that I needed a blood transfusion probably because I was that bad. At one point in the night, uh, Lupe saw my face and I guess it was really white and my lips were white and he thought I was dead and he shook me awake. He was like shaking me awake. That's how much blood that I lost. But I just, it was, at the, it was near the morning. It was almost like six in the morning and I was like, no, just get me some orange juice, get me some food and I will be okay. I did not want to go to the ER. But I don't recommend you do what I did, but because of COVID-19, I mean, this is such a different situation. You just can't go to the ER. You just can't do what you used to do, like, and have the support system. Your family can't go. Like, 
having a DNC if you're scheduled for one in 2020 is different than it was before. So basically through the night, I passed clots and clots. I had diarrhea, I vomited, I couldn't walk, I couldn't stand. I changed my clothes so many times. I think I bled through at least, I mean, I bled, I changed my clothes like four times, but I should have changed it more. But there was just a point where I couldn't and I just slept with my bloody crusty pajama pants on. I just want you guys to know this and I want you guys to be prepared. So that's why I'm going to share with you what I used or well basically what I didn't have that I wish I had had. I didn't get most of the items I needed until like six in the morning because I asked my aunt to come pick up some stuff for me. My mom brought stuff for me. So once I had these things, everything got a lot better, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I used and I'm going to be showing you how I prepped it. That way, like when you go into this, the restroom, you will be able to, you know, easily avoid blood all over yourself, basically. So the first most important item that I would say is the most important that saved me is Depends. These are Depends Fit Flex underwear and they are maximum <laughs> and they're in size medium. I don't know what size you guys need, but mediums fit me perfectly. I'm taking it out. It looks like this. It's really stretchy, so it doesn't hurt. It didn't hurt me at all. It... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just do this. It has some padding in there and I don't know I didn't use it just like this though I put a pad over this but but I used two so I used two two depends I put one on put on another one and then I put a pad over it these are the pads that we used um these are maxi pads overnight extra heavy these ones have wings. I don't care about the wings. The wings were just annoying to me. I'd rather not have wings, but these are some huge pads. I mean, I've never seen pads like this before. So these are, I don't know. We got these at Rite Aid, I think. And these are probably just like the store brand. Oh yeah, Rite Aid Pharmacy. I'm sure you could find some kind of maxi pad. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna open it up. I mean, this pad is very, 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 very big. So basically, I would wear two of these Depends, and in the Depends, I would put the pad in there. So you would have a ton of protection. I used these Signature Care under pads. Um, my friend didn't have these, so she, she used doggy pads. Whatever kind of pads, um, these are helpful. It's just like a pee pad that you can put underneath yourself. I would put a towel down first that you don't need or want and then put this on top of it. But it's like a pad, like a square. They look like this. And I recommend you do this before you even start the gushing because you're not gonna know when it's gonna come out so if you're having any pink um, light pink blood or any cramping at all I would just go ahead and sit on a few of these just because like I mean I got blood all over my couch and trying to get that stain out Ugh. another thing that I did not have and I didn't use at the time but I thought about it later and I was like what the heck why didn't I think of that is some kind of wipe like a body wipe you could use a baby wipe um Okay, these are not open yet. Let me open them. <laughs> I got these from Trader Joe's. They're cucumber and citrus face and body wipes. I didn't use these. Mm, they smell really good. But I had blood trickling down my legs, um, getting all over my hands, getting everywhere. But I wish I would have wiped my legs down with some of these. You just don't think. I guess I could have got a wash rag or I could have got paper towels, got them wet, and then wipe myself down. But I just think having these beside your toilet would be super helpful, and then you can just throw them away. Another thing that I would recommend is just putting an extra trash bag, like your little trash can in the bathroom is not gonna hold many diapers, pads, whatever. Use extra towels that you don't want, that you might wanna throw away because it gets that bloody. Like, I don't know if you really wanna try to get blood stains out of it or not, but you could. My husband, he is a little bit squirmish with blood and I had just told him, you don't have to go in the bathroom with me and I'll be fine. So he didn't and I told him not to go in there at all 
and if he had to pee, he should go outside. And he did, he peed outside. Warn your man, because I wasn't able to clean it up. I got blood everywhere because I didn't have the proper things I needed like I'm showing you. So blood was all over the toilet like it legit looked like a crime scene. I'm not kidding, I'm not exaggerating. There was blood on the toilet, there was blood on the sink, anything I touched, blood everywhere. Blood on the curtains of the shower. I couldn't wipe it down every time because I, every time I went back in, I just got more blood. So I just told him, go outside, pee outside, and he did that. And then the next morning, my mom, bless her heart, came in and she wiped down everything and got all the blood off because I couldn't stand and um, I couldn't do anything, so she cleaned it off so my husband could use the bathroom in the morning. Another thing I recommend, I super highly recommend, is having Gatorade in your fridge stocked, ready to go for you. Gatorade and orange juice, because I couldn't keep anything down and I was thirsty, but I would vomit. But like, you need food, you need uh, hydration, you need whatever electrolytes is in Gatorade, I don't know, whatever juice you like or, if it's Pedialyte, whatever it is, have something ready in your fridge that you can have because I couldn't, I couldn't keep anything down. And if you wanna avoid going to the hospital, and you need to keep some stuff in your system. So I recommend Gatorade and orange juice. And my last little tip for you guys is to go ahead and get your pajama pants ready. Get like five or six of these out have them laid out somewhere where you can access them easily. When I was having the miscarriage, I couldn't go to the room and I could barely turn on the light. Like I was so weak that I had to ask my husband to get me pajama pants, which he doesn't know where I keep them. He doesn't know where I keep my clothes. So I would recommend you just put extra pants or extra full sets of clothing, whatever it is you want, but have them accessible to you. I would get like six ready, like for sure. So I think I went over most of what I used, what helped me the most. Also in the morning, make sure you have someone, like don't be alone. I would not recommend you be alone just because if you lose a lot of blood, so have someone with you at all times, but have somebody else go get you your favorite food. I had McDonald's just because I was like, I need an orange juice, I need an egg McMuffin. You might be really malnourished, don't be afraid to ask people that you want something. If you're craving like oatmeal with berries on it, like ask for it, have someone bring you it because your body is gonna be really weak and you need to eat. And I recommend eating fruits and healthy stuff. My body has been craving fruits like no other since after the miscarriage. So I am going to take you into my bathroom and I'm gonna, my bathroom is tiny. So you're gonna see probably how I got blood everywhere. But anyways, I'm gonna take you into my bathroom to show you how I would set it up, where I'd put everything and give you a little bit more tips. But before I take you to the bathroom with me, I just wanna tell you a few more things about the miscarriage. I want you to know you're not alone. If you're feeling concerned or confused or like uninformed, I, I mean, I felt that way too. And I think there's a lot of people out there that do. The biggest takeaway, the biggest takeaway from this video is that I want women to be more informed. Oh, it'll be like a heavy period. No, it's nothing like a heavy period. And I think women deserve to know it will be painful. You will bleed a lot, but you have a support system to help you. And there are ways to help make this easier for you. If you think that someone could benefit from this video, please do share it. Please tell them that it's a little bit graphic, but maybe it will help somebody be better prepared. I think there needs to be a big change with the approach on how to handle miscarriage and what to do about the aftercare. With that being said, let's go to the bathroom. So, hey guys, welcome to my tiny little bathroom. I'm here to explain to you how to set it up so that everything can go more smoothly for you and hopefully you won't ruin like a ton of stuff like I did. So the first thing that I recommend you do is take the shower curtain off. I'm not gonna do that right now, but you're probably gonna get blood on it. You might even wanna like hop in the shower at one point, depending how well you feel, and this is gonna get full of blood. So get rid of it. I got blood on mine, had to clean it, not fun. Secondly, if you have a shower mat, which I do down here, and I don't feel like picking it up, I would say take it out. Like just get out anything that's gonna get stained that you don't need. If you have a nice pretty towel that you like, get rid of it. Replace it with some other towel that you don't care about getting dirty. 
Another critical thing you should do is have extra pajama pants and underwears and everything. Have them where it's easily accessible to you. So, I don't know, I would put it here or maybe put it on the couch, wherever you're sitting outside. Have some pants ready to go. Put them somewhere, put them somewhere safe. These little guys, I'm going to say, why don't I put them right here? Not sure why I have two empty toilet paper rolls. Then, that's the toilet right there. This is what I would do, guys. This is, like, super important. Get this stuff out. Take it out of the bags because you need it accessible to you right away because usually when you're coming to the bathroom, it's a rush. So what I would do is take a few out and I would put it somewhere where you can get it. So I, I had mine right on top of the toilet and it worked out just fine for me. And then I have some pads, take them out and I put them right here. So now everything is in a place. I know exactly where it is. I can easily grab it when I need it. Okay, but here's something that nobody told me and I just like clicked like after the fact the whole miscarriage was over and I got blood everywhere. At the at, towards the end when the bleeding had stopped, I figured out something that helped me a lot. This is a really good, awesome trick and it's not even a trick, it's kind of common sense, but it isn't common sense. So here you go. When you're coming in, when you're coming into the bathroom because you need to change, you need to use the bathroom, you're going to change your pads or your diapers, whatever. Most importantly, you grab the clean pad before you take down your pants, before you do anything, before you sit on the toilet. You take your pad, you open it up, and you set it somewhere where you can easily access it. Like, I don't know, I put mine on like the sink or something. Then it's already open, ready to go. Same with the diaper, have it ready to go. Like, separately, over here. So that way when you sit down, this is already clean and ready to go. Because once you touch your pants, your underwear, your diaper, you will probably get blood on your hands, which then is going to be really messy. So I recommend having these open already, having them out of the package, because I got blood all over the packages themselves. That's going to help you guys a lot. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys feel more prepared. Some of these just little tips, like, seems like common sense, but it isn't. Like, when you're in the moment, you don't know, and you get really overwhelmed by the blood, if you're trying to look for the baby, like, there's a lot. Last thing you want to do is be thinking like, where's my pants? Do I have a clean towel? Like prep this stuff in advance. Doctors don't really warn you. They make it seem like it's going to be a typical period. But from what I'm reading online in like the Facebook miscarriage groups, most women can agree. It is definitely more than a period. We got through it. It didn't happen the way we wanted. Like, of course, we wanted a healthy baby. Instead, we lost our baby. I wanted a DNC because I thought it would be less traumatic, which I believe it probably would have, but that's not the way it happened. And don't think like, oh, I'll wait and then I'll have someone get what I need. Like, no, get what you need beforehand. And I'm we live in a small town, and by the time it was like midnight when it all started for me, everything was closed. Nothing's open after 10 p.m. All right, guys, well, I hope these tips helped. Um, just know you're gonna have some days that are good like today is a good day for me I feel positive. I feel like I can make a difference and I can help other women Yesterday, I felt really sad. I missed the baby and I was thinking about all the things that could have been that didn't happen And I just want you to know that's normal just know that there are other women who have experienced similar things to you and it's okay to feel and your feelings are valid don't let anybody make you feel like because your baby wasn't born, that it's not a real pregnancy. Don't let anybody take that away from you. You are a mom and you are a beautiful mom and you always will be. So thank you for watching this video and take care.